Down yonder. Another young stallion trying to beat that black devil out of his herd. A fat chance any hawk has with that killer. Look at him. Man alive, look at that demon unwind. Boy, just a cyclone and up in horse hide. That's all. I'd give a month's wages to get my rope on that critter. Who wouldn't? I killed four horses trying to get my loop on him. Say, now's our chance while we've got him away from the herd. We'll surround him and rush him. You two fellows get behind those boulders down there. Okay. Bob, you and Yak go around and get to the head of the canyon. When you're all set, we'll rush him. Don't let that horse get you a foot or you'll scatter your carcass and hit her down. You take straight to him. Come on, Pat. Are you hurt, Slim? No, I'm all right. Give me that rifle, Yak. I'll rid the range of that killer. Stop! Don't shoot that horse, mister, please. One side there, boy, you'll get hurt. I'd rather you wouldn't shoot him. Oh, yeah? Yeah! What'd you do that for, you little buzzard? I couldn't let you shoot my horse, could I, mister? Your horse? That man-killing devil? Yep. 
And if you promise you won't shoot him, well, I'll prove it to you. Prove it to us, boy. Promise you won't shoot him? If he's yours, I won't. But you've got to prove it by laying hands on him. You ain't aiming to call up that man killer like he was a lap dog, are you, boy? <laughs> here, 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 Rex. <laughs> Look out, kid! Don't let him near you. He's plum poison. Here, here. Well, if I wasn't seeing it myself, I wouldn't believe it. Well, how long has this thing been going on? Oh, about two or three months. Well, I wouldn't have believed that that critter could ever been hammered into behaving. It wasn't hammered into him, mister. It was petted into him. I found him all tangled up in one of your barbed wire fences. Half starved and all cut up. So I took him and I fed him and kind of doctored him and... See, we became swell pals. Well, you win, boy. I reckon he's your horse. But take a tip from me, and don't ever try to ride him. Because if you do, he'll throw you so high, you starve to death before you like. Thanks for the advice, mister. But if anybody says he sees what I see, he's just an ordinary, no-account liar. Makes his and the winds blow free. Oh, bury me now. Hi, Dad. Hello, Jimmy. So that's the wild horse you've been telling me so much about, eh? Yes, sir. And ain't he the prettiest thing you ever saw wrapping horse hide? He sure is a beauty, son. He never would come all the way home with me before. But today when I got off, he followed me and kind of begged me to ride. Well, gentlemen, a wild horse is a real man-sized job. Don't go too close, Dad. He looks tame, but he's a killer. And he hates men. What? Well, he has a reason to hate him. If it wasn't for me this morning, well, one of them would have shot him. That's the way with men, Jimmy. Most of them ain't fit to associate with a good horse. That's what drove us out here, where we needn't have much to do with them. Why, I remember when... Let him know I'm here. You ain't, you ain't asking me to, to lie to him, are you, Daddy? Get rid of him some way, any way. <whistles> Who owns this ranch, Sonny? Me and my dad. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy Hicks. You know anybody around here by the name of Williams? Jed Williams? Here's a picture of the man I'm looking for. Maybe you've seen him. Yes, sir. I've seen that man. Where? He was working for the crossbar outfit two or three months ago. Where is the crossbar? Bay Jada, the other side of the range, just beyond the gap. Thanks, honey. I got rid of him, Daddy, and I didn't have to lie. You was working for the crossbar range. Was it my picture he showed you? Yes, Daddy. But he said your name was William. What does that mean? It means 
I've got to get that picture before he shows it to anyone else. No, Daddy, he won't let you bridle him. Hey, nonsense. I bridled horses before you were born. Daddy, he'll kill you, Daddy. Stop. Don't try to stop me. my own fault. He don't trust men any more than I do. Daddy. Oh. Daddy, where are you? Oh, here. And, and inside. Here. Oh. Don't worry, Daddy. I, I'll hook up the buckboard and we'll go to town right away. Oh, no. You mustn't, Jimmy. I mustn't go to town. Promise me you'll... Jed Williamson's trail. Gage Gondrich through the gap. We ride! you fellas for three days. What's all the excitement? Cardigan slipping one over on us. He's got a fleet of trucks and he's taking equipment into that oil field and number one says stop him. We can't stop now. We're hot on Williams's trail. Number one says stop those trucks. All right, Rollins. You take the boys and stop Cardigan. I'll go after Williams. Come on, man. tried to wreck the derricks and the engines and everything else at the oil field. Everything I got in the world is on these trucks, fellas. Now, we've got to get them through. Boss here with you. You bet. I knew I could count on you, fellas. All right, boys, let's get rolling.
Pretty badly hurt, Doc. You'd better drive him over to my office, Sonny. All right. I reckon you better bring him over here, Doc. Over there? What do you mean? I mean, that man is wanted for murder. His name is not Hickson, it's Williams. All right, boys, get him over to my office. Wouldn't give much for that feller's neck. No, sir. Are they... Are they gonna hang my... my daddy now, mister? Why, no. I... I reckon not, Sonny. to know about this, Mr. Hornbeck. Good heavens. Jed Williams arrested. That's the answer. To what? That's the explanation of the hoodoo at the oil field. What do you mean? If Williams has been hanging around all these years, he's the one that's responsible for these attacks on the oil field. That's exactly my sentiments. And I said so all the time. Oh, you said nothing of the kind. Well, I said something about it. Bob. Anyway, our troubles are over. Maybe they have just begun. Anyway, it's a good thing they've caught Williams. Yes, it was because it was a cold-blooded murder. Do you gentlemen really believe these accusations? Yes, don't you? No, I don't. Well, uh, you mean you don't believe Williams really committed this murder? I do not. And I'm going to defend him. Take a telegram, Miss Hall, please. Jed Williams, care of Sherry, Slocum, Slocum County, Oklahoma. I have just learned of your arrest. Always believed you innocent and intend to act as your attorney now. Important you say nothing to anyone until I see you. Signed, Hornbeck. That should be county instead of city. Well, gentlemen, I... Well, it looks as if this meeting is adjourned. Get that telegram off at once, please.
get a load of this. Jet Williams has been arrested in Slocum. I wonder what the voice will say to that. The voice. Once I'm ahead of the voice, my men are already on the job. But get out of my way. I'm in a hurry. You can't get away with my car, man. What's the trouble, Shorty? You remember my car that was stolen something? This fellow's got it and he won't give it up. This is his car. Get out. Go away. I'm in a hurry, brother. They all fixed. And Cardigan thinks he won that fight. What are you fellas doing here? I told you to stop those oil trucks before they reach the field. What makes you think they'll reach the oil field? You mean? Yeah. So you lost Williams' trail, eh? How do you know? The sheriff's got him here in jail. You mean he's here? Yeah, and we were just going over to take care of him. I'll take care of this myself. You fellows get on your horses and be ready to leave town quickly. Come on, come on. Hey, you ain't going on, boy. I gotta go. This is, this is my dad. That's none of my business. Get off that wagon. I can't. What am I, what am I gonna do? I gotta go. Oh, never mind, Jimmy. For sure. 
take care of the boy till I can send for him, will you? I sure will. Come on, come on. We better get going. Sam Hill, you suppose that means? I don't know. But if anything happens to my client, it may be unpleasant for you, Sheriff. Hello. Get me the Sheriff of Slocum, quick. <laughs> Never mind, Jimmy. Everything's gonna be all right. William Chase? I reckon so. He just left for Milesburg in the custody of Deputy Sheriff O'Brien. I'm Deputy Sheriff O'Brien. I was attacked on the way here and robbed of my credentials. Must have been one of William's friends. Helping him make a getaway. Come on, we'll organize a posse. Warning that Williams will never reach Milesburg alive.
like they're laying for us ahead, boys. Well, if it's a fight they won, what are we waiting for? with drilling equipment find their brakes gone as they start down a mountain grade. The path of the runaway trucks is Happy Cardigan, the drilling contractor whose last dollar has gone to purchase the equipment. Hidden on board one of the trucks, Jed Williams, accused of murder, is attempting to escape from a sheriff's posse with his little son, Jimmy. That burning truck, there's an old man in it. jump just after you did. He couldn't have jumped. He was hurt too bad. I tell you, I gotta go down there. Let me go. Let me go. I tell you, I can't let him burn. I gotta save it. Let me go. You couldn't do nothing, Sonny. Nobody could. Look, 
Look, boss. Somebody cut the brake rods in all the trucks. Well, boys, that just about ruins me. Don't believe I've got enough equipment to finish the job. You fellas go on back and salvage what you can off them other trucks. All right, Mr. Cardigan. Gotta go back to Milesburg and, and kind of get to the bottom of this thing. Come on, son, come on. And it is agreed, gentlemen, that we accept Mr. Ashton's offer. Oh, well, we might as well. Yes, we might as well. Take a letter to Mr. J. H. Ashton. Confirming your offer to purchase our oil lands. Hello, Cardigan. Hello, Cardigan. Well, did you get your equipment through all right? My equipment lies smashed at the bottom of Bobcat Gray. Smashed? Uh, what happened? My trucks were wrecked and a man was killed. A man yeah. killed? Who was it? This boy's father, Jed Williams. Jed Williams? He's dead? Oh, you knew him, eh? He was the original owner of our oil field. Well, who could have done this? Someone in this room. Well, what do you want to look at me for? Just what do you mean, Cardigan? I mean that one of you men is guilty of every crime that's been charged against this, this so-called who do? This is a very serious charge, Cardigan. Yes, very I serious. I presume you're prepared to prove it. That's exactly what I'm here for. There's a warning. I received just before my trucks were wrecked. And there's two letters. Sent from this office. You'll notice they were written on the same machine. That's right. By George, they're absolutely the same. Identical. We can prove it very quickly. Miss Hall, you take a couple of lines on your typewriter. Yes, sir. Now, here, look at that eye. Well, there's no difference at all. Now, don't tell me there's no difference. I tell you there's no difference between that eye. Look at that letter. What do you wish me to write? Address an envelope to the sheriff. Look at the dot over Yes, there. sir. Well, here, see that? But well, the typewriter's gone. Gone? Gone? Oh, that's Quite strange. strange. <clears throat> well, it was here when I came in. Gentlemen. Just a minute. I'm afraid you'll have to do some explaining. You're on the wrong track, Cardigan. We can give this gentleman a clean bill of health. Mr. Cardigan, let me introduce Mr. Ashton. Pleased to meet you. We can vouch for Mr. Ashton. In fact, we've practically accepted his offer to buy the oil field. Oh, you're going to buy the oil field, eh? Yes. May I ask if it's a fair price? No, it's a rotten price. But what's that got to do with it? Has it ever occurred to you gentlemen that all these attacks on the oil field might be for the purpose of hammering down the price? Are you hitting? No, I never hint, Mr. Ashton. All I know is I've got a contract to drill an oil well, and I'm going to drill it. Can I use your phone? Certainly. So you gentlemen have accepted my offer to buy the oil field. Yes. You speak for yourself, Larrabee. 
I've changed my mind. We are not selling. That's my sentiments exactly. I've been against it all the time. No, you haven't. You've been willing to sell for a song and sing it yourself. Well, I don't sing. Hello, Mike. See, I had a little trouble on the Bobcat grave. Send me out a couple of trucks. I'll meet you on the job. So long. Surely you don't believe his insinuations, gentlemen. I'm afraid, Mr. Ashton, that we must ask you to wait for our decision. Yes, we'll have to ask you to wait. Atkins, they shot my auto, tell you. You know that man? His name ain't Ashton. It's Stephen. Why, he's the brother of the man they say my daddy killed. Well, that's news, all right. No, son. Our first job is to get that equipment over the oil field. spoken yet? No. What makes you think the voice will talk? Cardigan is getting wise to us. The voice speaking. You had orders to crush Cardigan and you failed. Concentrate your forces on his camp. Tonight, the voice has spoken. Those are the orders I've been waiting for. You can finish. Orders from headquarters. We round up the wild herd and strike tonight. Come on. Stop a minute, will you, Mr. Cardigan? What's up? like a wild one to me. He is, and he's a killer. But look. <whistles> Red! You see, he's the king of the wild herd, but he hates men. But me and him is pals. Hey, where are you going? Oh, you don't have to wait for me, Mr. Cardigan. I'll ride Red. I look through the record. You two fellows scout around the brush and see what you can find. I found it, boss. That's it, sure enough. You two fellows follow that trail. Well, I go back and report. The boys are rounding up the wild herd now. Good. I have some news, too. Williams is alive. Are you sure? We picked up his train at the burned truck. Two of the boys are following. You fool! You got within reaching distance of Williams, the man we've been trying to get our hands on for months and years, and you send a couple of boys after him. Well, I thought I could bring you the news. News? I don't want the news. I want the man. 
Get out to Wild Horse Canyon and start the stampede. chasing him now. The herd will beat him to the oil field.
oil field where mysterious influences are working to prevent the development of oil happy cardigan the drilling contractor has been attacked by agents of the unknown enemy meanwhile his young friend jimmy williams has been knocked unconscious while trying to help him a mysterious band of horsemen known as the vanishing legion have stampeded a herd of wild horses with the purpose of wrecking cardigan's camp the legion is led by a commander who takes orders from an unknown higher up when it's all over you stay behind and put that phone call in at eight o'clock sharp and don't forget it <laughs> Thank you. If I didn't know it was you that planned the attack against me. I planned the attack against you? Jimmy heard and told me that you phoned in a disguised voice and threatened me if I failed to leave the district. I admit that. I've been trying to get you to abandon this dangerous job for months. I thought that if you wouldn't take advice, I might frighten you away. Well, if you're not a member of this gang, how did you know I was going to be attacked? I came here to save your life, not to be cross-questioned by you. I shan't annoy you any further. Goodbye, Mr. Cardigan. Cardigan, they got Jimmy. Jimmy? Who's got him? The Vanishing Legion. Then, come on, boys. Come on. Someone's got Jimmy. We're through. We come here to work. If we don't want to fight, we'd have joined the army. You mean? We mean this field is hoodoo, and you can't drill a well in it, and we won't get in killed prior. Do you get it? Hey, come on, boys. I'll go with you, Mr. Cardigan. I'll take you in my car. Everything's all right here, as far as I can tell. So you didn't want me to overtake the Vanishing Legion, eh? And you still deny you're one of them. Well, I... Oh, you might as well talk. Or the law will find a way to force it from you. I'm tired of your suspicions. Good night.
Excuse me, gentlemen. Hello? What? Rated? Thank you. Good heavens. What's the matter? Cardigan's camp at the oil field has been completely wiped out, and Cardigan has disappeared. That settles it. If Mr. Ashton still wants to buy the oil field, I am willing to sell. That's my sentiments exactly. I've been saying so all the time. Oh, Have you said of the other kind. All right, gentlemen. Mr. Hornbeck will draw up the transfer papers. We'll close the deal now. We'll close the deal now. As your attorney, gentlemen, I strongly advise you take no action until we've heard from Cardigan. That's right. You've changed your mind too often. We either close this deal tonight, or I withdraw my offer. Mr. Hornbeck! Mr. Hornbeck! What's the matter, Miss Hall? There's been an attack at the oil field. Mr. Cardigan's hurt badly, I think. I brought him here. He's out in the car. Come, Bailey. What's the idea of bringing Cardigan here? I told you Cardigan was not to be harmed. Down there, Bailey. Take care of him now. Watch him. That's the idea. Is he all right? Come with Jimmy. Tell me before I tear down. Easy, easy. Wait a minute. Easy. Man. What's the meaning of this, Cardigan? What's this man doing here? Mr. Ashton is here to buy the oil field. Ashton? His name ain't Ashton. It's Stevens. What? He's the brother of the man that Jimmy's father killed. He's back of all the raids on the oil field. He planned that raid last night. Jimmy overheard him. He came to tell me. It's too late. That's a mess of lies and you can't prove it. I know I can't prove it. Because, because, because you've stolen cheap. Surely, Mr. Hornbeck, you don't believe these ridiculous lies. The butler will show you to the door, Mr. But Ashton. But Mr. Hornbeck... Bailey, get Mr. Ashton's hat. Yes, get Mr. Ashton's hat. Your hat, sir. You're in no condition for that. I tell you, I've got to go. They've got Jimmy. I've got to. I'll go to the doctor. Jimmy. Jimmy. Don't you know me, Jimmy? My boy. Gee, Daddy. I didn't know it was you. I thought... I thought it was one of Stevens' men. Stevens. Come, come, boy. Get some rest now. Because come morning, we'll be traveling. Traveling? I can't stay around here and risk being hung. For a murder I didn't commit. Gee, Daddy. You can't be traveling all your life. We gotta stay and prove you ain't guilty. I don't know, son. I can wait him to 
wouldn't be fool enough to keep a campfire burning at night? Well, it don't seem reasonable, but you never can tell. You didn't seem surprised to find me still alive, Jimmy. I wasn't, Danny. You see, I knew that... Daddy! What's the matter, Jimmy? I'm not the only one that knows. Stevens knows. And two of his men are trailing. Stevens? We'd better put out that fire. That looks sort of suspicious. Let's get down there and find out. If I wasn't so played out, we'd move on a ways just to be safe. Listen. No, Dad. It's only the herd drifting back to the race. My horse picked up with him tonight when they stampeded the camp. If I could get him... Rex! Come on, Rex! Here, Rex! That's William's kid. We're on the trail, all right. Don't move, William. Get him up. We can't risk taking him in town. You ride in and tell Stevens we got him. Look out, Jimmy! Look out! What's the matter, Dad? No, I've got two prisoners instead of one. This will finish you with a voice, Larno. Letting Conigan lick you single-handed. I had Conigan lick to a standstill, and three of his men jumped me. And even then, I... Chance is all I need. Let's go. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to live. <laughs> Thanks to Miss Hall. And nevertheless, I think you'd better spend the night here. Miss Hall, though, she ought to be on her way home now. It's late.
The line's dead. It can't be the voice just spoke over it. You haven't a chance. The house is surrounded. What's your answer, Hornbeck? If I come out, will you let Miss Hall go? Yeah. Come on out. You mustn't. I won't let you sacrifice yourself for me. Oh, it isn't any sacrifice. They're bound to get me anyhow. Let me go and talk to them. All mobs are made up of cowards. I don't know who you men are, but I warn you. We have no quarrel with you, Mr. Hornbeck. This way, please. You mustn't go out, sir. I'm sure they won't harm him. Someone must say the thing this hall. Perfect talk. We can't stand them off here. Our only chance is upstairs. That's the deadline. Better get him from behind. Hold the stay away all night. We've got him. Last week, we saw Happy Cardigan and Caroline Hall trapped in a lonely house by agents of the mysterious criminal who calls himself The Voice. Cardigan has his last dollar in a do-or-die attempt to drill an oil well, in spite of warnings and attacks from a mysterious band of horsemen known as the Vanishing Legion. He has reason to suspect that Caroline Hall is secretly in league with the Legion and cannot understand why the whispering voice has ordered her to be captured. I know why this gang is out to get me. But why are they after you? There's no time to talk now. I'll try and phone the sheriff while you stand them off. You can't get to the phone. The men are downstairs. There's an extension up here. That's the deadline. We've got to get him from behind. The sheriff will be here on the run. Just let out with a posse, hightailing it to Hornbeck's house. Okay, Shorty, I'll attend to it.
Great news, boss. We got Williams. Williams? Where? Boulder Canyon. Fine. But wait. The sheriff's on his way over to Hornbeck's. Ride over there and tell him you've come to turn Williams over to the law. Well, you don't mean uh, after all we've been through to find Williams, you're going to let him hang? Can't you see, you fool? If Williams knows he's going to hang, and one word from me will save him, he'll talk. Now, you beat it and let me do the thinking. Hold oh, stay away all night. We've got him. Safe. Did those ruffians get Miss Hall? No, she's safe. Which way did they go? You mustn't try to follow them. The men who were guarding me said the voice had sent you to death. Oh, I'm still alive and... Just in time, Sheriff. They can't have gone far. Outside, boys. Pick up that trail. Someone phoned them. The voice came over a pocket radio that one of my guards took out of his pocket. Radio? You mean like this one? No, no. A pocket radio, no bigger than a cigarette case. Ah, nonsense. There ain't no such thing. I assure you that I heard it, and the voice came over it. Mr. Sheriff, here's one of those radios. Where'd you get this? I found it on the landing upstairs. One of the gangsters must have dropped it. Well, I'm looking at it, but I don't believe it. That's the signal that it's going to talk. The voice speaking. One of our pocket radios has been lost. Don't let it. What are you doing here at this hour of the night? I came here to see Mr. Hornbeck. What's your business with him? Come on, speak up. Speak up. Rex! Stop it, Rex! Oh, Rex. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. It's all right now. You thought you were going to hurt me. You're going in the house with me. And if that killer horse starts anything, I'll pluck him. Oh, please don't. 
You want to see me about, Sonny? This will explain, sir. Can I see you in private, mister? Wait a minute. You're William's kid. Where's your father hiding? I'm William's attorney, Sheriff. And I'd rather you wouldn't question this boy. Williams is an accused murderer, and it's against the law to shield him. You ought to know that, Hornbeck. Come on. Tell me where your father is. I'll tell you where Williams is. He's not hiding anymore, because Bill Peters and I captured him. Where is he now? He's in Boulder Canyon. Boulder Canyon? Can't get up there with my car. We'll have to get the horses. Come on. I don't understand this, Sonny. Did you know that your father was captured? Sure, but he isn't captured anymore. Me and Rex saved him. But how did you? I'll tell you later. I gotta go now and cover Dad's trail. He couldn't have gotten loose the way we had him tied. That kid is around here calling for that wild horse last night. I bet they did it. You're right. That horse is a killer. He done it, and the kid sicked him off. The minute I set eyes on that wild horse, I'll put him out of business. <laughs> There's the killer now. Give me that right. we got to do is rebuild our camp. I'm glad I wasn't sleeping on under any of that canvas. Who's your friend, Jimmy? Get that boy off the stallion so I can shoot. Man, Rich is there. Can't you see the brand on her? 
idea where your father is? Dad's gone from where I left him last night, and I don't know where he is. Gosh, I'm worried, Mr. Hornbeck. He'll try to get in touch with you. Maybe he'll write you a letter. The minute you hear anything, you must let me know at once. Thanks for asking me to live at your house. But Mr. Cardigan and me are working together, and we're going to solve this mystery. So I gotta stay at the oil field with him. Okay, Jimmy. But keep in touch with me if you want anything. You bet I will. Bye, Mr. Hornbeck. Bye, Miss Hall. Goodbye, Jimmy. Come again soon. Here's a letter, I guess, for Mr. Hornbeck. Why, it's for you. For me? Tell you if the voice hadn't interfered at Hornbeck's house, it would have been Cardigan's finish. You'll get another crack at him soon. The voice never fails.
<laughs> Take it easy, boys. I've got two of my men watching Cardigan right now. Sit down. Say, Henry, you know these delays have got my bankroll in pretty bad shape. How soon you figure on getting spotted in, partner? Oh, in about a week or so, I presume. You know, we're doing all we can here. We've had a lot of trouble so far. Yeah, I know. I suppose losing those trucks that you back a lot, but... Look, somebody very near got killed. Look up in the dairy. Jim? Hey, what's happened up there? Looks like pretty work, sir. You better come on up. Trouble, Brady. Over here, sir. Give me that letter from William. saw Happy Cardigan fighting for his life on top of an oil derrick. Happy has sunk his last dollar in a do or die attempt to drill an oil well. In spite of warnings and attacks from a mysterious band of horsemen known as the Vanishing Legion, his present peril is due to his friendship for young Jimmy Williams. Jimmy's father, a fugitive from justice, has sent his son a letter in care of Happy, while agents of a mysterious criminal who calls himself the Voice are trying to get hold of the letter. Good work, kid. Better give me that gun. Now march, bozo, and no tricks. Get a rope. What did you want with that letter? Come on. I ain't talking. I know. You thought that letter was from Williams, and you're trying to locate him. My guess is he's one of them Vanishing Legion fellas. There's a reason why they want to find out where Williams is. It has to do with this oil field. All right, fellas, go on back to work. I'll take this fellow in for sheriff. Hey, Whitey! Bring the car up here! All right, put him in the car. Well, son, I'm, I'm sure he's sorry I lost your letter. You couldn't help it. But I'm worried about Dad. He must need me real bad or he wouldn't have wrote. 
Haven't you any idea where he is, Jimmy? I might be able to pick up Dad's trail. Well, I reckon I'd try. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Cardigan. Take care of yourself. Sure. Spread out. Go slow and we're bound to pick him up. I heard that kid whistle. There he goes. He thinks he lost it. Come on. Speak up. I ain't talking. Oh, you're in, huh? No use. I'll lock him up. Come on. Tied up in my office, and Miss Hall has been taken away. I'll be right up. Shut up. Hey. Hall cry out. I went to the door. Somebody struck me over the head, and when I came to, I was tied up. Uh, probably the scene gang that attacked Miss Hall and Carnegie in your house last night. Yes, the Vanishing Legion. You all right, Hornbeck? Yes, Mr. Laramie untied me. Well, what about Miss Hall? They've taken her away. You must be mistaken, Hornbeck. They couldn't get her out of a building in broad daylight. I wouldn't be too sure, Sheriff. Wasn't there a locker standing there? Yes, there was a locker there. What's that got to do with it? Here's the stuff was dumped out of it. The Sheriff. Maybe this means something. Ah, uh, that ain't no clue. Show me how you were tied. Come with me and I'll show you. Don't you bozos ever look behind you? Look at that card. And that, and that. 
trail leading all the way from Hornback's office to our very door. But, uh... Next. The voice ever got wind of this bonehead play? You know what has happened. Hustle back there and pick him up before somebody gets hired. Go on. All right. Go on. Dodger. I got them all. Ain't nobody gonna trail us now. Where's the rest of them? That's all there was. Don't lie. It stands the reason she was dropping them all away from Hornbeck's office. I swear that's all there was. I ain't lying. Don't look at me like that, Lano. Lano, bring him in here. Well, get going. Get him, boys. Turn him loose. Get going. Pick him up. Turn around. Start walking. Open that door. Get 
Clear out. The voice wants to speak to Miss Hall. Alone. Come. It's a danger signal. Something must be wrong. Answer it. What's the trouble? Say, Dopey, didn't I tell you I didn't want to be a... What's the matter out there? It's Cardigan. He... Everybody to the rendezvous. Quick. Cardigan. He's trying to rescue the girl. Try and get them away. some way to stop him. Slow down. Pull close to that log.
Last week, we saw Happy Cardigan, the oil driller, racing his car in a desperate attempt to overtake a truck manned by two agents of the mysterious criminal who calls himself The Voice. On board the truck is a clothes locker in which Cardigan hid his friend, Caroline Hall, to protect her from agents of The Voice. Nearby, Cardigan's little friend, Jimmy Williams, is pursued by members of the mysterious Vanishing Legion, eager to locate his father, who is wanted for murder. Try that rock. Put it back in the gut rock. Go on. What is it? Wouldn't you like to know?
Shortwave radio, eh? Pretty clever. But you two babies won't be there. No? Well, you haven't got it to the sheriff yet, brother. Not yet. But soon. Wait a minute. Look the side of the road. Here. You going as far as Miles Park? Hey? I say you going as far as Miles Park. What's that? Say, partner, are you going as far as Miles Park? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Would you give us a lift? Oh, sure. Uh, where are you going? Sheriff's office. Oh, yes. Cl climb in. Climb aboard. You here. I thought I told you to save the oil fields and watch things. They were trailing that Williams kid, but he gave us the slip. You're just in time. I called a meeting. You called a meeting? Since when have you been master here? We were facing an emergency, demanding quick action. And you were nowhere to be found. be crushed. We've got to find Williams. He's the key to the whole situation. How do you propose to find him? The Vanishing Legion rides tonight. Against whom? Against Hornbeck. He knows where Williams is. Don't be absurd. I'm Hornbeck's secretary. I'm positive he knows nothing about the affair. I tell you he does, and we'll talk if we can get him alone. You're wrong. We've proven we can't strike without injuring innocent parties. No cause justifies that. Have you a better plan? Yes. I'm going to disband the Vanishing Legion. But, uh... You heard what I said. Our cause is lost. The Vanishing Legion will never ride again. I think we're going to give up our share of an oil field worth millions to please you. You're crazy. Listen to me, all of you. Any share you might have had in this oil field could come only through me. You'll either play the game my way, or I'll turn you all into the law, myself included. Why don't you tell the truth? You don't want to carry on because you're in love with Cardigan. If I'm in love with him, it's my business. The Vanishing Legion is disbanded. Are we going to let her get away with that? Why should we? Not after all the work we've done. We've earned our share of it, and we're going to get it. I knew you'd be with me. The Vanishing Legion rides tonight for Hornback.
for you, Sheriff. What are the charges against him? Plenty. They're members of that mysterious gang that's been raiding the oil field. Are you sure? We're carrying a proof with them. Huh. That's one of them newfangled radio sets. How do you reckon these things work? Well, I reckon that each member of the gang carries one. And the orders are broadcast by the chief from a central station. You fellas don't have to talk now. From now on, we'll get our orders directly from the headquarters. Suppose he knew that. What the deuce does he mean by insolent? You can search me. This is the last message that will ever be heard over set number 13. The voice has spoken. You're not so smart. You, Jimmy? Those men I trailed were members of the Vanishing Legion. Their headquarters is Diamond Bar Ranch. And they've gone to get Mr. Horn back. Goodbye. Let me go! Hush, Jimmy. It's me, Dad. Mr. Hornbeck's office. Oh, Caroline. How did you escape from those men? Oh, it's too long a story. You seem excited. Is anything wrong? The Vanishing Legion are on the way to get Hornbeck. I just wanted a warning. Mr. Hornbeck isn't here. You can get him at his house. Never mind the prisoners. The Vanishing Legion are after Hornbeck. I'm trying to phone him, but the line is busy. Well, I'll get my deputies and hustle out there. You keep on phoning the warrant. Well, that you, Cardigan? What's the matter? Oh, my dear boy, that's absurd. They wouldn't dare attempt such a thing. Son, we mustn't let anyone harm Mr. Hornbeck. He's the best friend we've got. But maybe you hadn't better risk it, Dad. You make it capture yourself. <laughs> Nonsense, boy. If you didn't recognize me, nobody else will. Well, all right. I'll catch up a horse for you.
you in here. I thought I could help Mr. Holmes. This is... But I... Please! You can do no good. You'll only make it more difficult. This is more than I expected, Cardigan. Between you and Hornbeck, we'll get what we want to wring it out of you. You can't get water out of a dry well, mister. We'll see. Line them up again all while I strike a light. mysterious band of horsemen known as the Vanishing Legion arrive at their headquarters with a prisoner. The captive is Mr. Hornbeck, attorney for an oil company from whom the Legion hoped to obtain valuable information. Hidden in the headquarters is Caroline Hall, Hornbeck's secretary, who until tonight was the leader of the Vanishing Legion. Happy Cardigan, whose attempt to drill an oil well had been blocked by the Legion, has learned of the danger to Hornbeck and come to help him. Meanwhile, from another direction, two friends of Hornbeck are approaching the ranch house. Jed Williams, who is falsely accused of murder, and his son, Jimmy. Don't move. They're all covered. This way, Mr. Hornbeck. This is more than I expected, Cardigan. Between you and Hornbeck, we'll get what we want to wring it out of you. You can't get water out of a dry well, mister. We'll see. Line him up against the wall while I strike a light. Boy, 
place into the light where we can get a look at him. What's the idea? Is this supposed to be a joke? You might as well quit stalling, Stephen. You're not fooling anyone. What are you talking about, Cardigan? I mean, I know all about those pocket radios you use to give orders to your men. Do any of you men know what he's talking about? No, never heard of him. Say, Stephen, you're smarter than I thought. But it won't work. I know that every man in your gang has got one of those radio sets. I saw them. If any man in this room has such a radio, he's a traitor. And I mean to find out who he is. If anyone's got one of them trick things, boss, it's her. The voice came from her direction. Search her. I'll save you the trouble. mean that you're an agent of the voice? You know very well it doesn't. Then how did you get that radio set? The same way you got yours this afternoon, from another man's pocket. Who's? I don't know. When you phoned the office this afternoon about the capture of Mr. Hornbeck, I picked up this coat to wear out here. I didn't know the radio was in the pocket of it. This is getting pretty close to home, Mr. Hornbeck. Do you recognize that coat? See if there's anything in that coat that would identify the owner. Why, it belongs to Larrabee, one of the oil company directors. So, I was right after all. I knew the voice was one of your directors, but I didn't know which one. There must be some mistake. Larrabee is one of the most honorable of men. Yeah? Well, he'll get a chance to prove it. Men, get ready to ride. We have no quarrel with you two men personally, but we'll have to hold you till we interview Larrabee. But I... I'm taking no chances of you warning your friends. This time I don't propose to lose. Jimmy seems to have found a way out for us. Hey, Rowan, or whatever your name is. That lamp makes us pretty good targets from the outside. It's right behind you, too. I'll bet you stand out like a sore thumb on a piccolo player. All right, doubt it. Remember, no monkey business. Take care of me. Go off, Hornbeck. I'll take care of myself.
in trouble. Back to the house, men. My car's behind the barn. You go. I'll wait for Mr. Carson. But I... Go on. Where's Mr. Hornbeck? He went in my car. Well, I will go in my car. I can't. Why? Well, you see, I came here with my... with, with my... Uh, what? With my horse, Rex. Was it your horse that fired that shot, Jimmy? Well, I guess and say, sir. You see, I... I found out something tonight. And, and I can't tell you until later. What do you suppose he's found out? Well, one thing we found out for certain. There's two gangs working instead of one. Come on. We've got to get Larrabee before the Vanishing Legion gets here. Third tent to the right. Is he inside? I reckon so. I haven't seen him leave yet. You come with us, Slade. Big help you are. Williams hasn't even been in here. Spread, boys. Quick, Mark, it's a night attack. What's all the fireworks for? Are you looking for trouble? I'm looking for a man named Williams. I don't know anyone with that name, and if he was here, you couldn't get him. Williams is in this camp, and I'm gonna take him. Drop it. Get him up there. Now, do I get Williams, or don't I? Well, I, I reckon if he was here, you could have him. Oh. Better wait here, Dad. If they see you with me, they might suspect. You go in first, Jimmy. I'll follow a little later. All right. Nope, you're wrong. I didn't hire anyone this afternoon. Didn't you say you saw him here this afternoon? Sure, I seen him. He's here, all right. Well, it's funny to me. I, I Look, don't... Look, there's Williams' his kid now. Go get him. He knows where his father is. There he goes, boys. Go after him.
Where's your dad? And don't lie. I... I can't tell. You'll tell or I'll... Let the boy alone. If you want Williams, here I am. Come and get... There he is, boys. Dad, that was a smart trick. When things are getting too hot for me. I better go get Miss Hornbeck's advice. He's the only man I can trust. Don't overlook Mr. Cardigan. I trust him more than anyone. Except you, of course. Well, Cardigan's your friend. Hornbeck's mine. It's you, Mr. Hornbeck. Something wrong, Sheriff? Well, yes, we heard that you were kidnapped. We've been scouring the country for you for hours. I was, but I don't think they meant me any harm. But what happened? Who done it? Please, Sheriff, this has been rather a trying ordeal. I'd rather wait and report it tomorrow. Yeah, but, but the men, who were they? I have no quarrel with them, nor they with me. Well, I reckon if you're satisfied, I ought to be. So long. <laughs> I'd better see Lara be alone, I reckon. It's liable to be no Sunday school picnic. Looking for someone, Mr. Cardigan? It was too nice to be indoors, and I wasn't sleepy. Yeah? You look worried. Is something wrong? Plenty. The Vanishing Legion got Mr. Hornbeck tonight. Hornbeck? Are you sure? I was there and helped him escape. Well, then he's safe. You gave me quite a shock. That's nothing to the shock you're going to get. What do you mean? This thing was found in your overcoat pocket. It's up to you to explain. Why, I... I... Why, you don't mean you... I wouldn't bother lying about it. This thing establishes you as the agent of the voice. I don't know what your part is in this fiendish game, but I'm here to find out. I was a fool to think that such things could be kept on the cover. You're right. I do know something, and I've known it for several days, but I didn't know what action to take. I still hope I'm mistaken. For the evidence I have indicates that the leader is... Don't! 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 Don't stop me. 
Mr. Larrabee's been killed. The murderer may get away. I reckon the murderer won't get away. You don't think I did it, do you, Sheriff? What about the gun, Thompson? Been fired just once. Midnight, and you running away from a murder with a gun in your hand with an empty shell under the hammer. And you ask me if I think you done it. Aye, aye. Come on, Cardigan. You're only three jumps behind the death house. Come on. The voice has spoken. Last week, we saw Happy Cardigan and Caroline Hall escaping from the headquarters of the mysterious horseman known as the Vanishing Legion. Cardigan's young pal, Jimmy Williams, has helped them to escape with the aid of his father, who is wanted for murder and wrecks the wild horse which none but Jimmy can ride. Cardigan's attempt to drill an oil well have been constantly blocked by the Legion, also by a gang operating under orders of a mysterious criminal who communicates by radio and calls himself The Voice. Cardigan believes that The Voice is one of the four directors of the oil company, and he and Caroline are hot on the trail. I'd better see Lara be alone, I reckon. It's liable to be no Sunday school picnic. This thing establishes you as the agent of the voice. I don't know what your part is in this fiendish game, but I'm here to find out. I still hope I'm mistaken, for the evidence I have indicates that the leader is. Don't! Don't! The murderer will make it away. I reckon the murderer won't get away. You don't think I did it, do you, Sheriff? What about the gun, Thompson? Been fired just once. Mm. Midnight. And you're running away from a murder with a gun in your hand with an empty shell under the hammer. And you ask me if I think you've done it. Well, Sheriff, I... Come on, Cardigan. You're only three jumps away from the death house. It's Miss Hall! Are you hurt, Miss Hall? Did you see his face? Did you recognize him? It's... it was so unexpected. I didn't get a look at it. Well, that's the fellow I was chasing. That's the guy that killed Larrabee. Will you help us catch him? And that'll clear you. Johnson, you stay here with the girl. It's me, Williams. Why, Williams, I wouldn't. 
wouldn't have known you. I had to disguise myself. I've been trying for days to get to you. Well, you're all out of breath. Are they after you? No, I... I don't think so. We'd better not take any chances. I don't want you arrested until after I've had time to prepare your defense. out there in the bushes and came in here to see if you were all right. Larry be killed. How did it happen? Ambushed on his own front porch, just as he's about to tell Cardigan who the voice was. You mean the voice shot him? Looks like it. Can we search your house? Why, certainly, of course. Turn out the light, Hornbeck. Well, Sheriff, you can see he's not in this room. Perhaps we'd better search the rest of the house. Yes. Yeah. I'll go this way and search outside. Some of these days, I'm going to beat you. You don't live right. The voice speaking. Williams is at Hornbeck's house. He must not escape. The voice has spoken. Let's go, boy. You were outside. Yeah. You also thought wrong when you said there was nobody in this room. Say, Mr. Hornbeck, why didn't you want the sheriff to know that Larry B's murderer was in this room? You better explain, or I'll call the sheriff. Come out of there. Didn't I hire you to work in the oil fields yesterday? Why did you kill Larrabee? I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. I don't even know him. You tell that to the sheriff. Come on. Wait, Mr. Cardigan, please wait. He couldn't have done it. I was with him all the time. Now you understand why I was hiding Williams from the sheriff. I'm his attorney in the Stevens murder case, and he came here at my request. Mr. Hornbeck, where does this door lead? Will you give me the key? Coming, sheriff. <laughs> crouching behind that table there. Good work. I ought to make you a deputy. 
you don't talk, I'll take you to jail. Found this fellow snooping around the house. Speaking of your men, Sheriff, I'd advise you to tell them to turn me loose. I have no mood for such kind of jokes. All right, boys, turn him loose. Mr. Bishop is okay. Besides, we've got the murderer. Is that the man that killed Arby? Well, I, I just came to tell you the news, Hornbeck, but, but I see you already know. Mr. Bishop, how did you know Larrabee was killed? What business is that of yours? I'm drilling an oil well. My business is to get it drilled. Somebody's been trying to stop me. Mr. Larrabee was just about to tell me who that somebody was when he was killed. Oh, rubbish. There's no trouble at that oil well but your own incompetence. If you were a real engineer, that well would have been finished long ago. And I, for one, am in favor of kicking you out. I don't agree to that, Bishop. Neither do I. Everything that has happened until tonight may have been an accident. Yes, it may have been an accident. But this was murder. Now, the question is, who is next? Yes, the question is, who is next? Excuse me. Yes? No? Who? Oh! All right. Larrabee is alive. What? Larrabee's alive. Miss Hall just said he has regained consciousness. Good. Then I'll take this bird over and have Larrabee identified. I'll go over and see if I can find out what he was trying to tell me. Come on. Didn't I tell you that all the time? The voice speaking. Larrabee is alive. And Williams is in the hands of the sheriff. You know what to do. The voice has spoken. Has Larrabee said anything? No, he's still unconscious. Why, it's Johnson! What happened to Larrabee? They tied me up and took Larrabee away. Look! The Vanishing Legion! me down. He went that way. I got it! You little brat! You helped that man escape! You... Look there, sir. He's getting away in your car. In a clean getaway. What'd you do it for? He's that Williams kid. Oh, so that's it, huh? That fellow's your father. Yes, he's my dad. And I wasn't let you hang him for a murder he didn't do. You, pretending to be my friend, and promised to help dad, and then double-crossed me by turning him over to the sheriff. Why, Jimmy? I thought you understood that the only place your dad would be safe from the voice would be in the hands of the sheriff. And I have spoiled it all. You mean... you were really helping him? Sure. Gee, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Did you insert this at present? Oh, I didn't put that in. I wonder who could have done it. Well, it couldn't be any friend of Williams or it would come to you. I wonder where Miss Hall is. Why don't you answer that phone? Hello. Yes. Yes, Mr. Cardigan's here. Just a moment. 
Hello. Hello, Mr. Cardigan. I watched the mailbox in the ad like you told me to, and I found out who opened it. But I better not tell you over the phone. All right, Jimmy. That's fine. Come right up to the office. I'll be waiting for you. Find out anything about that advertisement? I'd like to know. Yes, sir. Well, old man, how'd your detective work come out? Who took those letters out of the box? I better not tell. That's well, all right. We haven't any secrets that Miss Hall can't hear. Come on, spring it. Well, I'd rather tell you later. Who was it? Well, it was Miss Hall. All right, young lady. It's about time you and I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And I think you'd better put all your cards on the table. What do you want with Jed Williams? Well, I'll tell you. First of all, my name isn't Hall. It's Stevens. Stevens? It was my father who was murdered. Oh, then that's your motive. Revenge. I don't wish Mr. Williams any harm. I know he didn't kill my father. But he can tell me many things that will lead to the real murderer. Then that's your connection with the Vanishing Legion? Yes. My uncle and I banded the Legion together to find my father's murderer. And you helped him to get away with Larrabee last night? No. Last night, they were acting against my wishes. How many answers did you get to your advertisement? One. Is that your daddy's handwriting? No. You can't handle this alone, Miss Hall. Jimmy and I'll have to go with you. All right. Dumb clock dropped the desk. Last week, we saw Happy Cardigan and Caroline Hall enter a building where they expect to obtain information that may lead them to Jed Williams, who is accused of murdering Caroline's father. They are accompanied by Williams' young son, Jimmy, who remains outside to watch. 
while Caroline goes upstairs to interview her unknown correspondent in room 43. Cardigan trails her to see that no harm befalls her. like somebody grabbed Jimmy. He saved our lives. Don't let anything happen to him. Now, young man, I don't know what you're doing here, but you're going to tell me where your father is. No, Rick, you're going to talk. You're the one that'll do the talking, Steve. Beat it, son. I've got some business with Mr. Stevens. That door shut. Now, Stevens, you're going to answer some questions. Oh, yeah? trying to kill your niece. What do you mean? I haven't seen my niece since last night. Didn't you write her a note asking her to come to room 43? Yes, I wrote a note, but not to her. Didn't you try to get her up here so she'd fall through that fake door in room 43? Fake door? Well, I don't understand. This is room 43. Jimmy? Yes? What's the number of this room? Number 43. There, there's something fishy about this. Somebody must have changed them. Why, certainly you changed them. You don't think I'd hurt my own niece, do you? She and I are fighting in the same cause. You may have been fighting in the same cause, but you're sure at cross purposes now she wasn't a party to the disappearance of Larrabee. What have you... Wait a minute. What have you done with him? I won't tell anybody where Larrabee is. He's still alive, and I'm going to keep him safe. Don't 
Don't stop me. I've got him locked in that room, but the door won't hold long. What's your hurry? I am going to the ranch, and you're going with me. Larrabee's alive, and he won't talk to anybody but you. Here's the key. You can let Cardigan out if you want to, and spoil our plans. Well, I'll go with you. Jimmy, this looks like a busy day. You said Oh, Miss Lewis, uh, this is Miss Hall, the young lady I told you about. How is Mr. Larrabee? He's just about the same. the bar. Just an added precaution. Larrabee's over there. Oh, quiet. Why, he isn't here. That's the idea. Let me out of here. After Larrabee, we got to act quick. Boys, how do you know? I was just up in Black Cannon and I ran into a bunch of men. They were standing there listening to orders from the boys over a little radio and they're on their way right now. Larrabee's too sick to move and we only have a handful of men here. I'll phone the sheriff. Let's get him quick. Cardigan. I'll stop him. That got him. Rollins! I can't get the sheriff. 
phone won't work. The lines must be down. The lines down? We'll have to hold them off while one of us rides for help. Here they come now. It's too late. Take cover, boys, and let them have it. We've got Jimmy. Maybe so, but me and Rex can make a hard try at it. Jimmy, just jarred up a bit. Say, they're going to need more help than we can give them. You've got to ride for the sheriff, Jimmy. But what do you do? Don't you worry about me. I'm going over that ranch there and have a talk with Larrabee. All right, Mr. Cardigan. Some day, boss. I wonder what's up. Why, that ain't Dave. That's Cardigan. Boy, you got him, boss. You sure are a good shot. Yeah, and that's the finish of Mr. Cardigan. Don't shoot, Stevens. I've come to help you. It's Cardigan. You can come in, but if it's a stall, you're a dead one. You're not here because you love me. That's right. But you're protecting Larrabee. I'm with you on that. You get out of this alive. The fight's on again. You're on. How much ammunition you got? Just that. We're almost out. Hey, Stephen. Yeah? How about that box of powder we got? That's funny. Rollins just reminds me of a case of dynamite we bought to blow up your oil bearings. It'll come in handy now. Get it out! Let's put that box of dynamite next to this tree here. Wouldn't be so funny if a stray bullet hit it.
behind it and drown it. You've got to take a chance to get Larrabee away before it's too late. Hold him as long as you can. I try and get Larrabee off the back. Okay, boys, I'll hold him. Last week, we saw the headquarters of the Vanishing Legion attacked by agents of the mysterious criminal who calls himself The Voice. The attack came at a time when only three members of the Legion were at the ranch house. Aiding in the defense of the ranch is Happy Cardigan, an oil operator whose successful completion of a drilling contract depends upon his discovering the identity of the nefarious voice. Meanwhile, Cardigan's young pal, Jimmy Williams, mounted on Rex, the wild horse, is riding for help. Heavens, it's Caroline. I forgot all about her. She's locked in the next room. Try the outside door. Give myself. I hope she's not seriously injured. That explosion must have finished him, boys. Come on. Look out, boys. Duck. I think she's seriously injured. It's mostly shock, I guess. We mustn't take that chance. Get her things. I'll take her to a doctor. You 
certainly came in the nick of time. How did you find out? Jimmy Williams met us and brought us here. Jimmy? Where is he? He's outside with the boys. Where's Jimmy? He's with us when we came in. Jimmy! Oh, Jimmy! What you said Jimmy was here? Well, he was. Maybe one of Lano's men got him. Oh, no. Say, I've got to go after him. Let me have a horse. You better ask the boss. Say, Lano's gang must have gotten Jimmy. Let me have a horse now. Follow that gang and rescue him. Certainly, Cotton. I'm taking Miss Hall to town. My boys will give you a horse and all the help possible. Find Jimmy, Mr. Carter. I'll be all right. Big cow kicked by a mule. That ain't a funny way to treat a dead. The voice speaking. Take Jimmy Williams to Boxwood Gulch. Jedwins will come there. Be prepared for him. The voice has spoken. Tell me who is the voice. Yes. Yes. Quick, man, quick. Who is it? I know you're a killer and you hate men, but Jimmy needs me and I need you. So here's where we fight it out. That's not fire, Jimmy. What does this mean? It means that you're not as smart as you think you are. Get out of the car. Find out. 
thing Miss Hall didn't get a hold of this. It wouldn't have done her any good if she had got a hold of it. I've got her where she can't make any trouble. Good, that's great. Hello? What can I do for you, Mr. Hornbeck? Sheriff, I'm very much concerned about Miss Hall. She disappeared this morning, and I'm afraid something might have happened to her. He wants me to find Miss Hall for him. What am I saying? Tell him you don't know, that I haven't told you yet. Well, I'm very sorry to hear that, Mr. Hornbeck. But if I hear anything about her or find out her whereabouts, I'll get in touch with you at once. No, no, I haven't heard anything about Larry. Now, thanks very much for calling up. Goodbye. He hasn't heard a thing about Larrabee and doesn't know anything about Miss Hall. He didn't seem very much concerned about it either. <laughs> well, Cardigan must have disappeared also. I was out to the oil fields the other day and the men were sitting around doing nothing. Positively doing nothing. I move that we get rid of him and hire somebody else. That's what I say, get rid of him. Ah, well, we can't do that, gentlemen. Mr. Cardigan has the contract. Well, why isn't he working at it then, instead of gallivanting around the country with that Jed Williams kid? Yes, uh, why isn't he working? That's what I say. Well, I think it very kind of Mr. Cardigan to take an interest in the boy, now that his father is a fugitive from justice. That's exactly my sentiments. I believe you're looking for a man named Williams. Yeah, what about him? I could tell you how you could lay your hands on him. Well, when me and my deputies have failed, we'll send for your help. Hello. Hello, Cardigan. What? Jimmy Williams has been captured by the voices again. Where did you say they'd taken him? Where? Foxwood Gulch. Why, that's in Slocum County. That's out of my jurisdiction. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, I can't help you. No, goodbye. Well, aren't you going to rescue Jimmy Williams? Certainly not. You heard what I said. It's out of my county. It's a shame. You've been asked for help, and you refuse to give it. Well, what business is out of yours? Who are you? I'm Jed Williams. I came here to give myself up. But after what I've heard, I'm going to save my boy. And you or nobody else is going to stop me. Where are you going? Sit down. That was Cardigan. Get him!
last, Williams. I've got you where I want you. Drive on. Right for it, Jimmy. Your father's life depends on it. I'll try and hold him here. Go on. mysterious vanishing legion forced out of his car by the nurse whom he engaged to care for his niece Caroline. Jed Williams, whom the legion are trying to capture, is rushing to the aid of his young son, Jimmy, who has been captured by agents of the unknown criminal called The Voice. Meanwhile, Happy Cardigan, whose attempts to drill an oil well have been blocked by the vanishing legion, has trailed The Voice's gang in the hope of aiding his little friend, Jimmy. Cardigan. Get him! It's Cardigan. He's got Jimmy. That's him, boy. I've got you covered. Well, it looks like you win, Stevens. Go ahead and shoot. I didn't kill your brother, but I can't prove it. I know you didn't, and I can prove it. How can you prove that? That will wait. One thing I want to know. Didn't you sell the oil rights to my brother before he was found murdered? Why, well, yes. I sold the oil rights to your brother and later sold the surface rights to... Uh... Look! Jimmy and Cardigan. Understand. You mean you're all friends of Williams? The best he's got in the world. Because we can prove he's innocent. Well, go ahead, I'm listening. Oh, wait a minute. I want Jimmy to hear this. There's too many of them for us to tackle. We'll wait and see what turns up.
We've got to capture the voice. In the meantime, we've got to guard Williams. But where? Well, my oil camp is the safest place. My men are all loyal. And your men can stay in guard. Good. Three of you come with me. The rest of you ride cross country to the oil field. Come along, Jimmy. I can't. I got Rex, Dad. I'll follow up behind. They're splitting up. We can stop the car at the pass and get Williams. Come on. We can roll some bowlers down, block the road, and when the car stops, we've got Williams. this oil field? Exactly. I never saw such mismanagement in all my life. His contract expires tonight, and he expects us to give him an extension. Yes, he expects us to give him an extension. Hmm. The matter doesn't call for a director's meeting. Simply ignore the letter, and the contract automatically expires. Personally, I think you're making a great mistake in losing this man. <laughs> but my business is too urgent to stay in our Now, what this? What this? My private secretary, Miss Hall, has mysteriously disappeared. And after all that has happened, I am afraid for her safety. Oh, nonsense. 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 Uh, these stories of lawlessness in the oil fields, oh, it's all imagination. Yes, it's all imagination. No. You have a right to your opinions, gentlemen. But Miss Hall has served us too loyally for me to risk her safety when a call on the sheriff might forestall it. Good day, gentlemen. That's strange. What? I never knew him to act like that before. Neither did I. I, I wonder if he's found anything out. I don't know, but he certainly acts like it. Yes, he certainly acts like it. Now, I wonder who that can be. I don't know. Go to the door and see who it is. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. No, afraid? Oh, you... You coward, you! It's important. Uh, who's it from? Who's it from? I don't know. I found it in the street wrapped around a 50 cent piece. Give it to me. I'm Hornbeck. Oh. Hey, mister. There's 50 cents wrapped up in that note. Huh? There's 50 cents in that note. It's a lucky thing we were here to get this. It's a lucky thing we were here to get this. Let's get out of here before... Uh, come on, let's get out of here. Hurry up. Yeah. I feel trouble. Go ahead. Hello, Kaiser. You look like you got something worrying you. I have plenty. Miss Hall has disappeared and something's got to be done to find her. I suppose you're going to call out the militia just because your girl gave you the runaround, eh? Cut out that line or I'll forget that you're sheriff of this two before county. Miss Hall was injured and was on her way to the hospital with a nurse and a friend. Suddenly the nurse pulled a gun on the friend and forced him from the car and took Miss Hall. Somebody's been kidding you. 
Nurses don't go around kidnapping girls. Forget it. So you don't intend to do anything about it, eh? Why should I? Say, I'm beginning to believe the rumors I've heard about you. That you're in league with a voice. What? I happen to know that you refused aid when Jimmy Williams was in the power of the voice. Okay. I'll handle this thing myself. Hold on. How did you know that? Jed Williams told me himself. Everything works fine, Sheriff. I've got the girl where no one will ever think of looking for her. Good, that's great. She hasn't done any talking yet, but I think she knows plenty. Yes, and I think I know plenty, too. Well, this pretty near proves that you're an agent of the voice. And when I get through with you... And when I get through with you, you'll be sorry you ever started anything. So get back to the girl. Don't let her talk to anyone until I see her. So you're finally showing your true colors, eh? How do you aim to silence me? By shooting me? Not unless you resist arrest. Arrest? You can't arrest me. You are under arrest for aiding a murderer or evade the law. Now get into the cell there. How long do you figure on keeping me? Just long enough to attend to a little business I have on hand. Watch. What's the meaning of this, Sheriff? I'm arresting this man for aiding Williams to evade the law. He's arresting me because I'm interfering with the plans of his friends. The writers of the voice. That's a serious charge, Cardigan. Oh, I happen to know from his own lips that he kidnapped Miss Hall and is holding her somewhere. I have a right to use any method I choose to unravel a mystery. But not kidnapping, Sheriff. As your attorney, Cardigan, I would advise you to leave. But now, would you rather I take it up with the district attorney and demand an official investigation of your department, Sheriff? I thought not. A good day. You weren't serious when you accused him of being an agent of the voice, were you? Well, it doesn't seem reasonable. But I know the sheriff has Miss Hall held prisoner some way. Well, this is serious and demands an investigation by the district attorney. No, an investigation would take too much time. Let me capture the voice and that'll automatically release Miss Hall. Why, you speak as if capturing the voice were but a matter of a few hours. Well, I think it is. I have a plan that I'm pretty sure won't fail. That is news. Now, if you need any help... If I need any help, I'll let you know in plenty of time. Meanwhile, I've got to hire a car and get back to the oil fields. Well, why rent a car? Why not take mine? You need it more than I do. Why, thank you, sir. So we're just in time. Just in time. <laughs> I'd rather be shot than make this report to the voice. But I guess it's got to be done. Williams. 
time. It's the finish for all of us. Go ahead, Mr. Cardigan. We didn't recognize your car. That's all right, boys. If I had men like you, half my troubles at the oil field wouldn't have happened. Well, thanks. Steven? Yeah, quiet as a tomb. I got my men stationed all around the camp to prevent any surprises. Good. Well, I guess we better go inside and figure out a plan to catch the voice. All right. I beg your pardon, Mr. Cardigan, but hadn't you better forget that for a moment and take care of your own affairs? Why, right, what's on your mind? I knew blame well you'd forgot. Man, this is the last day of your contract. You either hit oil today or you're through. Today? I thought it was tomorrow. Well, about the only thing we can do is to order a slug of nitro and shoot the well. If that don't bring in oil, why, well, I'm sunk. I knew you'd say that, so I ordered it on my own hook. I might have known you'd outguess me. Well, let's get started. You fellas will have to wait, I guess, to find out whether I'm a millionaire or a pauper. Well, Trace, if you're ready, we'll lower the hook and shoot the bottom out. What are they going to do, Dad? Sometimes when they get close to oil, instead of going on drilling, they lower nitroglycerin and fire it, hoping to break through to the oil. Cardigan, whose efforts to drill an oil well have been hampered by a mysterious band of horsemen known as the Vanishing Legion, has settled his differences with the Legion and they are now united against the mysterious criminal who calls himself the Voice. The Legion, under command of Stevens, is at the oil field guarding Jed Williams, the original owner of the property, who is wanted by the sheriff on a charge of having murdered Stevens' brother, Len. Agents of the mysterious voice are advancing on the oil field to a legion and capture Williams. Meanwhile, Cardigan is racing against time in a last minute effort to bring in an oil well before his drilling contract expires. Cardigan's chance of bringing in a well. Yeah, you fix Cardigan all right.
I guess you're safe now, Williams. The voice isn't likely to attack you again. Don't fool yourself, Stevens. The voice is more dangerous than ever. Now that we're closing in on him. Gee, Mr. Cardigan, do you think he'll attack Dad again? No, Jimmy, don't worry. We wouldn't give him a chance to strike. We'll get after the voice. You mean to say you know who the voice is? Yes, and I have my plans all laid to capture it. I'll phone Mr. Hornbeck that we brought the well in. Then we'll get after the boy. Hello, Mr. Hornbeck. Cargan speaking. Well, we've done it at last. We just brought in a gusher. Good work, Cardigan. I'll notify the directors at once. Yeah? Have them meet me at your house. I'm very anxious to see them. Oh, it's a long story. Can't tell it over the phone. Be sure and get Bishop and Allen and Warren. I'm very anxious about Miss Hall. Have you found any trace of her? No. I'm afraid something serious has happened to her. You remember, the voice attacked her once before. If the voice has got her, I know who he is. The sheriff. The woman who took Miss Hall away was an agent of the sheriff. You mean you think the sheriff is the voice? I'll tell you all about it when I see you. Be sure and have the three directors there. All right, goodbye. Hello. Was oh, that you, Miss Lewis? What? She's gone. Who took her? Three men. They're taking her away in a car right now. Oh. They're slipping something over on me, huh? Well, I've changed my plans. I don't need Miss Hall. I can capture Williams without her. <sighs> okay, Mr. Cardigan. I understand. We'll be there when you want us. Before you go, you telephone the sheriff and tell him to meet me at Hornbeck's house, will you? Tell him I'm to have a prisoner for him. Gee, Mr. Cardigan, now that you've tamed my wild horse, I guess I'll let you ride him. Oh, I wouldn't think of taking him away from you, Jimmy. Rex and I understand each other, but you're the only one he loves. Miss Hall. Oh, my dear girl, I'm glad to see you safe. Where did you find her? They rescued me from that terrible woman. Oh, we don't deserve much credit, you know. Miss Hall engineered her own escape. Yes, Miss Hall engineered her own escape. Uh, she dropped a note out of the window addressed to you at your office. We merely followed it up. Yeah, we merely followed it up. In fact, she was beating the woman up when we got there. Yes, <laughs> she was beating the woman up when we got there. Cardigan says that woman is an agent of the sheriff. Sheriff. And Cardigan believes that the sheriff is the voice. The voice, the voice. Well, I'll be switched. I've been telling you that all the time, haven't I? No. Well, Sheriff, what brings you here? Hello, Hornbeck. Well, I see you found your secretary. Well, young lady, what do you mean by giving Mr. Hornbeck such a scare? Don't blame her. She's had a narrow escape from that mysterious criminal that calls himself the voice. The voice? Ah, a lot of baloney. Whoever saw the voice? Well, don't look at me. I'm not the voice. Am I? I don't know. Cardigan sent word for me to meet him here. Said he was going to have a prisoner for me. A, a, a prisoner? Oh. Wait till you see.
leave the window open, Jimmy. Leave it to me, Mr. Cardigan. William! So, this is your prisoner, eh? William, I arrest you for the murder of Len Stephen. No, Sheriff. That isn't the prisoner I meant. Williams is the one man in the world that couldn't have murdered Stevens. Ah, talk sense, Cardigan. We all know that Williams is guilty. Stevens, before he died, wrote Williams' name in the sand. Just a minute. Which hand did Stevens write with? Well, the right one, of course. Exactly. That proves that Stevens couldn't have written Williams' name in the sand because Len Stevens was left-handed. Uh, that's true. My brother was left-handed. You mean whoever murdered Stevens wrote William's name to throw the blame on him? Exactly. Well, you were so smart. Who what? The man that wanted Williams out of the way. The man that's been trying to murder Williams ever since he was arrested at Slocum. The voice. Yeah, that's easy to say. But who is the voice? I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, don't you think it's warm in here? Yes. voice is going to speak. The voice speaking. Come quickly to Hornbeck's house. Interesting thing, the radio, isn't it, Sheriff? Just watch your game, Cardigan. I know those shots were a trick of yours. If you know who the voice is, talk. You tell him, Williams. The day Len Stevens was murdered, he came to me and bought the oil rights to my land. I gave him a sort of deed. Whoever killed him did it to destroy the paper and blame the murder on me after I left town. You mean the voice? It's one of the owners of the oil company? What? That's it. Who is the guilty one? Which one is the voice? You get to right, Hornbeck. Come out! All right. I'll come out. Wait until I turn off the current. Come on! Hurry up! He's gone! 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 What do you mean? Scatter around the house! Have a look in there. Let's see. Where are you gone to?
Any of you boys missing, is it? Well, Cardigan, this is your finish. Turning yellow, eh? Drop that gun, quick! Phone back almost got you, huh? No, just a scratch. I guess the old boy would have gotten you, hadn't been for Rex here. All right, lift their guns, boys. What's all this, Cardigan? Well, this is Hornbeck's gang. The men that captured them are the Vanishing Legion. The Vanishing Legion? That gang of lawbreakers? Well, they're not lawbreakers, Sheriff. They've been on the side of the law all the time. They were merely trying to prevent people from taking oil out of the ground that had no right to it. The Legion is risen for the last time, Sheriff. From now on, they'll all be too busy at the oil fields. You mean the Milesburg Oil Company don't own any of the oil fields? No, Sheriff. My niece here is the sole heiress of my brother. He brought the property oil rights from William. We men of the Legion were promised a share for helping her establish her claim. Let's not forget that we couldn't have established our claim without Mr. Williams. I vote he share equally with the rest. You're right. Gee, Dad, we're rich. Thanks to Miss Hall. And Mr. Cardigan. Well, you wouldn't forget your old partner, would you, son? All right, boys, take him away. What about Cardigan, Caroline? How does he figure in our new company? I guess Rex wants you to go home. Oh, Rex wants me to go home, huh? Yeah. 